and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin, here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is vote. <laughs> we may debate the effectiveness of our, our capability to vote or the impact of our individual votes, but it's something that we can do. Um, and we'll talk about all of that in just a little bit, but good morning, good morning, Rosalyn, welcome. Great to have you here with us this morning and welcome to everybody else who's joining us. And before we start our conversation today, let's just take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure. All those sensations, including the tickling and tingling when you stop. And allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is voting day, and um, it might be arguable as to how effective our voting is. However, our rights to vote are, are threatened on many, many fronts, uh, not overtly through the law, but through all kinds of manipulations like eliminating mailboxes to be able to uh, vote by mail. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I noticed the outside mailbox at the post office where I generally go is now gone. And um, I, I've read reports of all kinds of mailboxes that were on the street being removed and um, our postal service is is being uh, picked at to be stripping it away and and uh, kind of decapitating it, making it an ineffective uh, organization or or structure, so that it's. Mail is not as reliable as it was. It's not as accessible as it was. It's expensive for a letter now. I think it was 60 cents uh, a stamp now. Uh, just And this was a week or two ago. So um, that's one way that our accessibility to voting has been limited. Uh, there have been uh, laws around... Um, not being able to, I think, have a uh, beverage or, or food or something, something along that order in line for voting when people line up to vote. Um, the, they have just been, there have been all kinds of actions to make voting less accessible and um, just more difficult. Move, removing and moving polling places to areas that are inaccessible through public transportation, for example. I'll, check it out. All these things have been happening and they've been happening kind of under the radar for most people. Most people aren't aware that these machinations are occurring. 
not to mention redistricting where there's gerrymandering to um, create create uh, politically favorable demographic pockets for um, being able to skew a vote in a way that isn't representative. So this people have fought and died for the right to vote. And we have that right in this country so far. And to preserve the integrity of the vote and preserve our right to vote and preserve the integrity of the way that those votes are tallied and counted and recorded is one of the most direct ways that maybe the most direct way that we can be involved in national politics. I don't know, maybe a more direct way is going to um, local town meetings and rallies and things like that, perhaps. But so far, uh, we do have this right that people have fought and died for. And by the way, the the trajectory, and I don't have the years. Good morning, good morning, good evening, Gia, welcome. We're talking about voting. Today is a voting day in the US. And um, we're talking about the importance of the book of the vote, but we you may not be aware, and I'm gonna probably um, just butcher this, but the the I don't know the years, but the progression of voting rights in this country was first the voting rights were for white men then black men got the vote then white women got the vote and eventually black women and indigenous people got the vote i'm not certain where in the hierarchy the indigenous vote comes to play but it hasn't been that long for sure that women and black women have had the vote. And again, I apologize for not knowing where in this um, timeline indigenous vote came in. But this is, this is not a right to squander. Even though we see such manipulation around elections, and potentially around the results. This is an important thing. And I encourage you to exercise your right today uh, to, at this very, very critical time in our history as a country, I invite you to vote your conscience and to be looking at the ramifications of, of um, our, our action or inaction. And you may think your vote doesn't make a difference. You may think that it's all a, a rigged game anyway. And that may be true. It may be true. And I think we still get to vote. So, and, and I don't know about you, but I can say that for me, for most elections, and this is an unfortunate thing, and that's maybe, maybe why we should become more engaged locally in our local uh, our local politics and our local communities and local governance is that most often I find that my vote is not for someone, but against someone to um, choose the lesser of, of two or multiple evils, unfortunately. And we, we play this strategy game 
too, to say, well, if I were going to vote for somebody, it would be this other person, but they don't have a chance of winning. So I need to vote against this other person with a way in a way that's going to um, have an impact. And it's it's really interesting. You know, there are some countries and I can't name them, of course, um, but uh, there are some countries that have sort of a multiple choice ballot. And I think with the craziness that we see with the electoral college in this country and how the um, electoral college has determined the the winning president, despite the discrepancy in popular votes, you know, the popular vote hasn't won for a number of elections, by the way, which is also an interesting thing. The electoral college to my understanding, was originally set up to protect the interests of the intelligent people um, who didn't believe in the um, the intelligence or the right of of lesser quote unquote lesser people to determine the fate of the country. So our votes are not equal as things are set up. What happens is that um, there's a popular vote within each state. And then based on that popular vote, electoral college votes are assigned. And so it's not, an, it's not a direct representation of the people. And that's set up deliberately. Do a little research about that and you'll see that um, the elite who were running the country didn't believe that the populace had the intelligence and therefore should not have the right to be swaying the future of the country. It's a very, very fraught and and um, divisive kind of history. So Rosalind says, voting with our dollars I love this, Rosalyn. That's another, I, I really appreciate you bringing this aspect into the conversation. So voting with our dollars, choosing products that are less harmful for the environment. It's less expensive to eat fast food compared to buying fresh produce. So it's true, you know, putting our money where our mouth is in a very literal way, right? Voting with our dollars to choose healthful food and healthful products. And unfortunately, it's often more expensive for us to do that. Also voting with our dollars in terms of the kinds of things we support. And this goes into a conversation around our investments because many of us are invested in stocks or bonds or cryptocurrency or options or commodities. And we tend to invest in things that are going to provide us with stability or the greatest returns. Maybe we're in a mutual fund or multiple mutual funds or ETFs. But the thing that we don't necessarily all consider is the ramifications of those investments. Even, even the credit cards that we use or the banks that we choose, this is also a way that we can vote with our money, vote with our dollars, is by looking at what are the investments that your bank has. So many of us who are, um, who are looking to end our reliance on fossil fuels are banking at banks that are highly invested in fossil fuels and uh, other kinds of investments that are potentially devastating and also at odds with our personal values. So this is a really important thing. I'm so glad you opened the door to this, Rosalind is to be looking at really putting our money where our mouth is, putting walking our talk and looking at where we are investing and if we are supporting technologies and products and foods and processes 
that are in alignment with our values. And it requires a greater diligence, you know, to be looking at, are we investing in companies whose labor policies are in alignment with our vision? You know, are we investing in companies that use child labor in foreign countries, for example, to make clothing um, or to be mining minerals that are being used in certain technologies? So there's a greater call to vigilance uh, in not just placing a political vote. I mean, may, maybe our vo definitely our voting with our dollars is also a political vote um, because in in our atmosphere, pretty much everything is political in one way or another. Uh, to look at where we donate money, to look at where we literally invest money for returns. So many of the banks have had predatory practices, predatory lending practices, creating the whole housing crisis, the banking crisis. And how about if we look at those companies look at those companies to um, to determine are these are these organizations organizations that we want to support with our dollars or whatever currency we have you know are these are these the organizations that we want to support can we call upon them to divest themselves of certain investments or certain practices that they engage in? Can we call them to account? So there are so many fronts on which we literally can make our voices heard, on which we can vote. It's interesting how in so many ways, the access that the internet has provided for us has opened worlds and worlds and worlds of information. And also, as, as I've got grown up, I've, I'm noticing still an ever-increasing requirement that we become our own experts in pretty much everything that uh, we live in a culture of buyer beware, but also that everything is possible and everything is accessible and therefore we're more accountable and responsible for knowing a multitude of different things, knowing about our taxes, you know, having to find, having to know enough to be able to find an expert that is trustworthy, you know, knowing more about our investments, knowing about the ingredients of the products we buy, knowing about the origins of, of certain um, of products that we buy, uh, knowing about energy efficiency, knowing about so, so, so much, knowing about nutrition, knowing about, you know, being able to research our own medical care. And it's, it's fascinating how this gift of access to information has created such an abundance of information and responsibility that we can easily feel overwhelmed, right? I mean, we can find information about everything, which is awesome. It's awesome that we can, but then because there is such a um, tremendous abundance of this information, we need to vet it because we don't know what 
is true and what's not true or what is beneficial or what is harmful because we find so many contradictory messages. Um, so I guess another way that we vote is with our actions and our conversation. You know, we can um, perpetuate conversations when we hear when we hear conversations that are perpetuating racism, sexism, um, supremacism, we can say nothing. We can do nothing or we can vote with our voice and our actions. And there may be situations where it's physically dangerous to do so, in which case it may be recommended to find another path of action or intervention um, or not. I guess that's a very deeply personal choice. But in a certain way, we're voting all the time. Uh, and we can be thinking about that as choosing. You know, we're, we're choosing how we're going to interact with others. We're choosing how we're going to face the day. Uh, we're choosing how we're going to engage with the world and, and its challenges. So all of that to say, our voice matters and we have the capability and right and responsibility, I think, to engage, to engage, to speak up, to um, to look for Ways of connection. And it keeps coming back to presence and connection, doesn't it? Pretty much all the way around. Um, and we have we have a lot of systems that are set up where we can peacefully make our voices heard. And one of those ways is to vote, voting with our dollars, partly. Um, maybe that's one of the most effective ways. So I encourage you to go vote, like at the polls, to have at least some engagement with our, with our system and this notion of democracy and it's so interesting how often I've heard democracy referred to as an experiment in our in our media coverage of things. And I think that our it, and it, um, I hear that our democracy democracy is under threat. And One of the ways to address that is to become more active in preserving the system, or at least the parts of the system that are functional. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that there are some countries that have sort of a multiple choice ballot, which would be freaking amazing instead of this two party system where you place your votes, you place your vote as a hierarchy of the different candidates, this one, and if not that one, this one, and if not that one, the next one. And what happens is that it becomes a popular majority, but it's not black and white so that you don't have to risk not voting for someone that you want. So 
you could vote for the person that you really wanted. And if it, if they weren't going to win in the majority vote, then your vote would go to the next choice. And then if that person weren't going to win collectively, then that would go to the next choice. And it seems to me that that's a much more um, functional kind of system than this black and white thing where we get caught in in making a um, polarized choice that is often not reflective of our truer intentions or desires. So Roslyn says, going to your local city council meeting or board of supervisor meetings to see what issues are in your area. I think that's a great idea. I, Roslyn, I've been pretty much apolitical most of my life, and I'm actually getting more and more called to be more engaged locally. And um, I think that that's where we can really make an impact, a more direct impact. So with that, please exercise your right to vote today. And that's it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And as always, it is my pleasure and privilege to have the opportunity to have these conversations, these discussions with you each morning uh, during the week. I, I find it such a privilege and a gift. So until next time, so much love to you.